Hello again. So, a philosopher called Heraclitus asked this question. Can you step in the same river twice? And, um, this is actually some of my philosophy work that I've been doing at college. And I'm going to give my answer to this question. Because, um, there is really no right or wrong answer here. Because, yeah, it's, um, it's all about thinking and questioning things, isn't it? And thinking outside the box. So, can you step in the same river twice? I'd like to hear some of your ideas in the comments about this because um, it's good to get an, gain new perspectives on certain things which otherwise you wouldn't be able to think up yourself because when you focus on one perspective for a long period of time, it's, it's hard for our brains to readjust to allow a new one to come in or allow ourselves to perceive a new one. So yeah, that would be interesting if you've got any ideas. Right, basically, I think, well, I'm, I'm, I don't have a straight answer for this, but I'm going to give my reasons why you could and why you couldn't. So the reasons why it isn't going to be the same, you're not going to be stood in the same river twice is, for one thing, the water is constantly moving down the river, so you're never standing in the same molecule of water each time. It's always a different one from a different part up a stream that you're going to be standing in. Um, unless, of course, the water is then, is it called, precipitated. Precipitation happens where the water is carried back to the top of the mountain and comes down the river again. That's um, sort of an argument for standing in the same river. But what are the chances of that water going back to that exact spot? So, yeah. And even if they did, it wouldn't be every single molecule of water in the same order, would it? Another thing is... Um, the rocks and the sand and the stone and the mud at the bottom of the riverbed are constantly getting pushed down the stream um, along with the water. So you're never really standing on the same on the same bed of the river neither. So that again equates to it not being the same river. But it is all to do with how you perceive it because um, the river name stays the same. To a close-minded perspective man. To a man with a closed-minded perspective on life is going to constantly, no matter what you explain to them, they're going to say that river is exactly the same river you stood in. So if you've got that perspective on the river, then you are always standing in the same river. Um, but for me, I've n I never really came across this question before until I'm reading through this booklet that I've been given at college. and. It, um, it's really interesting because it's one of them things you never really think about, do you? Uh, there's so many different parts that play into it. I'm going to have a look if there's anything I haven't mentioned. Hmm. Yeah, so I've said about um, the riverbed being eroded away and constantly changing. Um, I also said that um, everything's made from the same matter of the universe. So if you look at things that way and say that everything is one, then nothing truly changes, does it? Because it's all still the same, the same sort of materials that built it up in the first place. Even if it's a different, it's not exactly the same atom or molecule. It's still all the stardust and things like that which actually created our universe. Um, also, matter can't be destroyed or created. Same with energy. So it's the same energy and matter which is um, pushing the river along its journey. Um, yeah, so in that sense it is the same river, but then I think more leads to it being not the same river because it's it's just constantly changing. The same with everything in life. Um, you could say the same thing about a tree. Like, is a tree the same tree as it was yesterday? I don't think it is because all the all of the leaves are constantly growing and falling off, and the it's aging slightly each day. So it's getting diff like like it is happening like slowly, and you don't notice it like overnight, but you notice it over long periods of time. So something must have must have happened each day 
or each hour for that tree to slowly become a completely different thing. Like if I just stand up a minute and try and explain what I'm trying to say. So if we can find like a small tree, so we've got um, a small but quite old looking set of trees over here. Um, these trees are probably quite young and they're not going to get much taller. But um, they've grown from... But they, then they progress into much bigger trees like like this one right here, which actually goes um, a lot down onto the path beneath. So everything's constantly changing. Nothing's ever the same as it was yesterday or as it was a year ago or a century ago. It's constantly changing. And it's the same with us. Like, are we, depending on how you define who you are as a person and what makes up the human being, are we ever really the same as we were yesterday? Because if you look at ourselves over time, we change dramatically like looking at myself a year ago I've changed so much but excluding this year because I did notice when the changes were happening before that previous the like first 16 years of my life I didn't notice myself changing each day I just um because I wasn't mindful of it I just accepted that I was different than I was when I was a baby or a child so and even then, does our consciousness stay the same, or does that change too? Because um, consciousness, like, what is consciousness? <laughs> um, philosophers always try and answer this question, but it's one of them ones that's pretty unanswerable, unanswer if you ask me. It's um, such an open-winded question that it's really hard to find a specific answer to. But is is our consciousness changing, or does it stay the same throughout our lives? But we're just unlocking more when we go on the spiritual path we're just unlocking bigger parts of our consciousness which we didn't fully know they were there but it was always there in our subconscious our consciousness is always within ourselves it's just whether we're mindfulness whether we're mindful of it and whether we allow it to come through our persona and um take a hold of our lives <laughs> That's pretty trippy. Um, yeah. Um, one thing I have noticed about the philosophy lessons at college are um, there is no right or wrong answers. This is what you tell. This is what they tell you. But you're always going to be swayed towards a specific answer because that's what the exam board want you to write in your essays and stuff like that. So you can give as many out of the box points as you want, but at the end of the day you've got to be you've got to some answers are favoured more than others and they're gonna get you more marks. And that's sort of like putting me down a little bit because I like thinking outside the box. Um yeah. Anyway I think I'm gonna end off that video here. We've made a little bit of progress. And I, I don't know what's happened today but I'm just able to like talk and my mind's all clear and stuff. So yeah, that's good. Um nice clear thought process can't can't be mad about that. I guess it's because I've been doing stuff all day and um, I've been occupied rather than just sitting in my bedroom watching the same YouTube videos and playing Call of Duty. <laughs> I know Aaron doesn't like that one. War games, but apparently they're actually good for your brain. They make you, like, like action-packed games actually improve your cognition and um, your reaction time. So uh, that's my argu argument against that. Anyway, um, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.